It's the beginning of the year, and for you artists out there, that means art goals. Now, I know a lot of artists who struggle with creating what they set out to create, or not having enough time to create, or even not sharing their work with as many people as they want to. I'm not perfect, but I am a productive person, and I usually get quite a few of my art goals done every year. So I thought I would share how I approach setting my art goals with you all in hopes that it helps you have a more productive and creative year. Here are five things to keep in mind when setting up your art goals this year. Step one, check what carryover there is from the previous year. Are there any deadlines or appointments scheduled already? Please take those into account. For example, I already have a few art workshops that are scheduled for this year that I was already in talks with about at the end of last year. So I should have goals reflecting these workshops and making sure I have time set aside for the actual workshop itself as well as the time put in to plan and set them up. Also, look back at goals from the previous year. Are there any goals that you didn't get a chance to do? Or maybe there are goals that you set every year because they still stand true. For example, I usually set a goal to read a certain amount of art business or art related books each year. And even though I've met that goal in the previous year, I still find it's a helpful goal, so I carry it over to this year. Number two, consider your time. Think about how long it takes you to do something when scheduling out tasks. It wouldn't make much sense if you planned a weekly to-do list with like 30 things on it, when one of those tasks will take up like 70% of your time that week. Now you can estimate how long something's going to take you depending on how macro you're going to be. If I'm planning how many exhibitions I want to do in a year or how many exhibitions I want to apply to in a year, I'm aware that it may take me several months to prepare for one exhibition. So there is a finite amount of shows I can do each year. So I should schedule based off that information. If I want to give myself a self-imposed deadline, I need to consider how long it would take me to finish uh, the art piece that I've given myself a deadline for if it's the only piece I'm working on versus if I'm juggling multiple projects. And that's also to consider outside factors, uh, my day job, uh, my personal schedule, things like that. Thinking this way really helps out when planning out measurable goals. Speaking of which, number three, measurable goals. I find in some cases having a specific number in mind for a goal is key to getting it done. I like to give myself a minimum or perhaps a range when it comes to goals based off of art creation. I have a goal to create a minimum of 10 works this year. This may seem like a weird number, but let me explain further. This number also doesn't include rough drafts to final pieces. This minimum of 10 pieces is specifically for final realized works, the sort of things that would be included in exhibition. Now, my art practice tends to be very time consuming. So I'm thinking of that when I come up with this minimum number of 10. I'm thinking more of, let's say, it takes me one month to make one piece. So with that, that would be 12 pieces, right? But I am taking off a month on the end of each year. Uh, usually the end, like the end of the year, I try to slow things down. Uh, I tend to, uh, if, I, if I don't, I'll push myself a bit too much. I tend to get sick around this time of year. So I try to slow things down where I am just sketching um, or spending time with family and friends. And uh, I mean, 2020 was a different kind of year, but I still tried to slow things down. So let's take that month off. And then begin the year is often uh, planning the year out, kind of assessing things. And so I also kind of take that month off um, as far as finalized work. So that leaves you with 10 pieces. Now, I often have pieces that take me more than a month, and so that taking those two months off gives me a little bit of wiggle room, but I feel like that's a really strong goal for me to aim for. Now, I know maybe even like three years ago, the idea of making 10 pieces in a year, like 10 really polished, finalized pieces would be really daunting, but I've noticed, because I've been tracking how many pieces I make, I've noticed that there has been um, this sort of increase in my productivity and I think I can do it. I think it's it's still enough where it's going to challenge me a bit, but I think um, I could still do it and something I could aim for. And at the end of the day, it is still a minimum. So if I end up making like 20 really good, polished, finished, refined pieces and all of them end up in exhibitions or being sold or on my website, then that's great too. 
Um, but odds are not everything I make, even if it is finished or realized, will eventually end up in my portfolio or in a show. Um, some pieces I do actually, you know, are very like resolved, but they end up just being personal pieces for me. Um, that's fine, those count too. Uh, but I think just giving myself a minimum for this goal um, works for me personally. Number four, give yourself action goals, but also give yourself lesson goals. A lot of people, when they think like New Year's resolutions, they think like I'm giving up this sort of thing or I'm picking up this sort of thing. Now, the previous thing I described where I set out to make a certain amount of art, that would be more like an action goal. But I also try to balance out my list of goals with lesson goals, sort of things that I want to learn that I think will aid in my art practice. Now you can get specific in this, but uh, I try to leave at least, you can leave it open though too. Like for example, last year I, like a lot of people in quarantine, I bought a tufting gun and learned how to use it to make rugs. Now, at the beginning of the year, I did not have a goal saying, oh, I want to learn how to use a tufting gun because I don't think I even knew what that was. But I did have a goal to like learn a new skill in my art practice. And so I did that. So I left it open. I think it's good if you maybe have like a specific goal in mind of something you want to learn. Like uh, I want to learn how to use a loom. I know surprisingly I don't know how to do that already, which is one of the reasons it's one of my goals. So that's a specific thing. But I may leave it open to another goal where I'm just like anything that I think will um, add to my art practice. And I've already started looking into some of the other things those could be. Um, but for this year, I'm mainly going to keep it closed just because I have a few skills I started to kind of dabble in last year that weren't really like... Well, some of them may be goals, but I really want to like really lean into them this year. So my this year, it's going to be mainly specific skills. Lesson skills can be kind of hard to stick to. Sometimes the kind of, you know, as you're going, they stop being shiny and new and you kind of want to drop them. Um, so those are the ones that you're really going to have to push through on, as well as don't pick up lesson goals that are not within your budget. There are so many free resources out there on the internet for you to learn a skill completely free, um, but don't end up dropping money for something when there is maybe another skill that you're interested in that doesn't require any upfront cost. Number five, write it down and draw it out. This step kind of makes it sound like these goals are set in stone, but the reason I'm saying to write it down is to give you more flexibility. If you write it down, you can track how you feel about that goal. You can check in halfway through the year to see if that goal still applies to you, if you're on track to follow it, and you can make changes. You don't know what's going to happen. Maybe you want to do a specific goal, but then something really big popped up like a global pandemic, or maybe a bigger opportunity that you need to a lot, a lot of time to, so you need to prioritize things differently. For artists, this doesn't just go for goals. It can go for art projects as well. When I get a new sketchbook, at the first page, I like to write down ideas that I haven't fully gotten to address, or maybe I had sketched something and I thought, oh, that could be, that's something, but I don't know yet. And I'll write down like a short little sentence kind of describing that imagery so I can come back to it. I think it's good to do that, whether it's at the beginning of a year, a month, a week, or a new sketchbook or a new journal to just kind of write down ideas that you'd want to look into further. That way you don't end up like forgetting about it. Before I used to do this, I used to like come up with ideas and you know, I would come up with so many and over time I'd lose them. And then maybe occasionally I'm cleaning up and I'm looking through an old sketchbook and I'm like, oh, ha, I thought of that like, oh man, this, and sometimes if you're really lucky, you can connect the dots between these ideas. Sometimes you'll keep, ske you'll sketch something and then maybe months later you'll sketch something else. And then like months later, you'll look back at these, just these little jotted notes and you'll think, oh, you know what? This idea connects to this idea, which connects to this idea. And then together they make a whole project. If you're curious about what some of my art goals are for this year, I have a post about it on my Instagram. Maybe you have similar goals. Maybe you have vastly different goals. Let me know in the comments what sort of things you want to get done this year as far as your art making goes. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more content like this. This is Jasmine Best, till next time.